Hello and welcome back to the Squadcast New Year, but same old squad. Happy 2021, everybody. I'm here with Caboose. We have Steve and Malik joining me. Um, and we're going to be breaking down our predictions for 2021 because we just want to look ahead and not remember 2020. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we made it. Yeah. About on the money, right? Um, so some of the things that we're going to be talking about is titles that we're going to think we're going to see, titles that we would like to see, uh, known releases that we're really stoked about, and some gaming events that we're hoping, if it's safe, we could attend. So now that you know everything that you need to know about in terms, or about in terms, I don't know, <laughs> about what we're talking about this episode, let your voice be heard in the chat. Tweet us at Squad State Clip. And let's just have some fun, everybody. All right. Now, uh, oh, so many nice people in the chat already saying Happy New Year. Before we get- Happy New Year, everyone. Happy New Year. Yeah, Happy New Year. Before we get started, I was actually going to ask, how was everybody's holiday? Uh, good. Oh, super good. good. Loved it. Yeah. <laughs> Chilled out. <laughs> you, know, you know you've been in the house for too long when everybody's <laughs> like, yep, yep, good. Super just I uh, I we we I hung out. I went to the grocery store once, so that was really exciting. Oh, um there you go. <laughs> <laughs> it was snowing because that's really exciting. I heard that. Oh man. Yeah. Um uh, but yeah, just did, did didn't do too much, just hung out, chilled out, uh, played some games, and um, and yeah, that's really like that's it, you know, just did what I can, hung out with the fam as much as I could, uh, watched Wonder Woman. Which we were talking about a little bit before we went live. Some people in here aren't the biggest fan. I thought it was okay. Um, and yeah, it was a good holiday. It was a good holiday. Mm -hmm. Could have been worse. It's a good time to be a gamer, that's for sure. Yeah. Oh, definitely <laughs> a good time. I think I played uh, Spider Man Miles Morales for like the third time now. Nice. <laughs> nice. So, um, that's a I've great like Christmas, like holiday game. Oh my god! Oh, I had my little yeah. my little toque and then the star. yes, yes. <laughs> I was go. loving every moment of it. Um, so let's get into some of these titles because, like I said, we want to look ahead to the new year, and I think it's going to be a really exciting year for games as a whole. Uh, so let's kick off with titles that we think we'll see. Now for this one, these are these are pretty much like hints <laughs> that. We probably will see some of these titles come out this year or more of these titles. So I'm going to kick it off. For me, of course, if you've watched the Squadcast before, if you just know me, you know I got to pull in some Zelda somewhere. Uh, so I'm going to say Breath of the Wild 2. We've got it teased a couple of years back. And now I feel like this is going to be the year that we're probably going to see the game and maybe for a holiday release. Maybe. Ooh. I, I feel like Nintendo is really great at teasing a game, forgetting all about it, right? Not, <laughs> not saying a word about it at all. And then bam, a trailer comes out with a date. And it's usually within the same year. Uh, Nintendo's done this before. Um, even with the previous Breath of the Wild, uh, it wasn't such close window when we first got that trailer. But it still came out way sooner than a lot of fans thought we would see because with any of their IPs, they do take a lot of time with. Um, mm -hmm. And I appreciate that with Nintendo. I appreciate the fact that they usually don't announce a game or show you any more of the game unless they could tell you when the game's coming out for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm 100% with you. I think Nintendo's obviously been really quiet lately. Like they haven't done a full direct in over a year at this point. Yeah. I, I think the last one was back in September of 2019. Um, so I think like this is the year that they just come out, you know, give us that new trailer and then boom, at the end, it, I agree. I think it's going to be a holiday game. I was kind of surprised we didn't see that game awards, to be honest. Uh, yeah. But I think yeah. that's the indication that it's coming out later. But are we think... surprised we didn't see that game awards? Because I feel like this is such a huge title for them that they would want to be in control of how it's announced. Uh, I like in terms that. of having it within a direct, I feel like Nintendo for their really big titles, they're usually like, okay, we are doing a direct for this and we're going mm -hmm. to tease all these little things within the direct rather than, you know, what they've done with Smash at the Game Awards is say, okay, we were, everyone knows the game. We're just announcing a new 
character, um, mm. a new fighter. So like, I understand why they would may hold back from the game awards in order to hopefully do a direct for it. I could be wrong, but didn't they reveal the first breath of the wild at the game awards? Did they? Oh, I thought they did. And, um, for a couple of years, like Nintendo was on like a really great track of yeah. really or revealing like really high profile stuff at the game awards. Like they had a really clo a close relationship for a while. So I kind of figured that they would just kind of repeat this, but I, I just feel like it's on track for later. <laughs> okay. So do you... I'm, I'm trying to Google this just to get stuff on the spot here. I think it was yeah. E3 2016, maybe. Yeah. I... Yeah. E3, okay. I feel they revealed. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's what I'm seeing here. E3 2016 on IGN, the reveal trailer for the newest Legend of Zelda title shows off combat, new foes, cooking, and a beautiful new Hyrule. Do you think E3 2016. You think we see it at the E3 digital conferences here? No. no. If they do something like that, I'd say that there's certainly a chance. I, I um, feel like Nintendo, if it's digital, Nintendo's just going to do their own thing. Um, um, and I, I feel like we may see true, it at the time of E3, but we won't see it as a part of whatever E3 is digital if they do a digital um, version. Is. You, you know, I, I think more and more, especially this year, and, and looking back at last year and the way that certain events were ran, unless it's like PlayStation, which has their own titles, and so, of course, they're going to be the ones at the helm of running an event like that, um, you're not going to see a lot of, like major reveals or announcements made at something like a potential E3 digital show or a game awards, because some of these companies or some of these publishers maybe want to run stuff their own way. Like I, I wouldn't even be surprised if this year WB because, because the plan apparently last year before the pandemic and everything was that WB was apparently going to have their own press conference at E3 yeah. and they were going to run and, and reveal like a bunch of stuff like, on their own accord and so i wouldn't even be surprised if they just do that this year officially as like a digital press conference like yeah they had dc fandom and that's probably going to happen again this year because i i like from what i've seen of the numbers of what it did last year it was a huge huge success um so we're probably going to see another dc fandom and hopefully we get like some more like suicide squad news or depending on whether or not gotham knights has come out at the time maybe some more stuff from gotham knights but i do see like a WB or Square Enix or all these other major publishers, Nintendo, well, Nintendo, not really a publisher, but you know what I mean? Like just doing their own thing, not shopping their stuff to the E3 digital conference or the game awards, but rather just throwing their own event because it maybe just costs them less than having to like pay for a spot, you know? And, and yeah. it's growing pains like, well, not for Nintendo because they're so used to putting on these digital, you know, announcements. Yeah right uh, but for a lot of publishers like you mentioned i think it's the growing pains of kind of understanding that's where we have to go especially in a world where we're stuck at home so yeah. it just makes sense to try to per, per, uh, sorry to, to try to perfect that um yourself rather than rely mm -hmm. on a uh, an expo that kind of did it okay last year right. um you know so i i feel like we won't see the full backing of E3 until we're back there at the expo in person. Right. Uh, but I want to continue right. on with some of the other things that I think we'll see. I just have a couple more and then I'll let you guys sound off on yours. <laughs> I think we're going to see Final Fantasy VII Remake Part II. Um, I really do. I feel like, you know, Square has been working on this for a long time. I know they've said that there's going to be delays here and there between each part, um, but we do know there's a lot of parts coming. Right. So yeah. I feel like it would make sense. I can't, I, I cannot understand waiting two years for the next part mm. of Final Fantasy VII Remake. It just doesn't make sense <laughs> when you know that there's another part coming after that. So I think we're going to see it. Um, I, I, I see Steve like there kind of like, no, no, I, you had like I was I was kind of hesitant uh, the first part, but then yeah, you, I think you nailed it. Everyone's under the impression, yeah, we're getting a second part, so why hold that so close to the vest? Um, I think you should just come out and say, yeah, it's in the works, it's coming out, you know, in a couple of years, or even just give an update, like a rough timeline of when we should expect. I don't see the point of so being silent. So hold on, break this down for me. So Final Fantasy VII remake is not like. 
a full game like it's part it's one of a part game. two yeah. it's, it's, it's like the first 10 of like, hours yeah. <laughs> of Final Fantasy 7 it's it's, <laughs> it's not the, it's worth it though like it does it's not like you're just getting 10 hours of playtime right like they really um embellished more on where um you know the first game just kind of trickled over um they also kind of rewrote the story in some aspects i'm not gonna try to give anything away and Okay, that's another thing. Okay, Square, if you're listening, please yeah. just come out with part two and all the other parts so n everyone can start spoiling, okay? It's really hard. Usually, you, know, <laughs> you say like six months, you know, or three months, you you don't spoil things. But for years, Square, for years, I can't spoil things because the full game's not out. I think yet. you're I think you're in the clear. I'm not too worried about spoilers because I you could spoil the whole thing for me and I still won't know what's going on. <laughs> I still have no clue what's happening. Um, okay, that's but, fair. Okay, you know what from what you're telling me it sounds like that is something that we'll probably end up getting or seeing real soon yes and i hope that we also see metroid prime metroid prime sorry um right. i don't think that we'll be able to play it this year but i do feel we'll be able to see a preview of the gameplay i hope so uh, that yeah. so that game had to restart development right like they had to oh, start kind of from scratch yeah. when when was it that it had to restart development i think we found out about it in 2019 Mm -hmm. okay it was confirmed but there were rumors flowing like really mm. um credible sources from 2018 so it um, probably restarted development a lot longer before it was officially kind of reported yes mm -hmm. uh, yeah. i mean in that case like yeah i'd say that's there's, there's definitely a possibility like if nintendo holds a big direct an official legit one in the summer or at some point this year i think you will see something like uh, a, a new Breath of the Wild or a new Zelda game uh, being finally fully announced, fully revealed, and then that Metroid Prime game with like whatever development they put into it since kind of rebooting uh, revealed as well. So I think I think, think those are two definite possibilities. You think we get a? I think we get a new Switch version if they announce these two. Because I look, I can't see Metroid Prime and Breath of the Wild in not 1080. Like, right, come right, on. right, right. It's yeah, 2021. I, you can't release a game in 720 anymore. I love you, Nintendo. Love you, but you, we got, we need, we need to get into the modern era a little bit. Yeah, I think especially with the release of the new next gen consoles uh, and everything, like Nintendo, they're not really lagging behind. Like, I think Nintendo's very comfortable in the position that they're in right now because, like. Right. They know they have such a dedicated fan base of like people who will just buy their products, buy their games. Um, but I think especially in terms of quality uh, and, and, and fidelity as well, and just the way that they can present these games, they're not hitting the mark, at least at, at least sort of at what the very base standard is. You know, playing games at 720 is not but in 2020, works. man. Not in 2021. I would expect that from Nintendo. Google Stadia. I would expect that from Stadia. But and like the, I feel like Nintendo's excuse has been that their games are super stylized. Yeah. That that works, but only right. for so long, right? Yeah. But I feel like Nintendo doesn't even need to because no one's complaining about the Switch. Exactly. Like you have Nintendo. the Switch, you could play on the go, and you could choose to play it on your TV. I do play it on my TV. I love, you know, a 65 inch Breath <laughs> of the Wild in my face, even if it like there's a little hiccups here and there um, in the frame rates, but. I enjoy it that way because I'm so well invested into Breath of the Wild and Zelda and those IPs that Nintendo has. And they know that we're going to keep coming to them. Um, so I don't feel like they're in a rush to release another Switch, um, especially because they revealed the light. There were rumors that, you know, there would be a, a pro, the pro Switch with yeah. the wider screen and all that. We didn't see that. Who knows? Maybe 2021 we will, but I don't think. I, I personally don't think we will. I'll tell you what. They did the Switch Lite, which is supposed to be the strictly kind of portable version of the Switch that you're supposed to take on the go. And then that's its only use. It's not meant to be something you want. You hook up to a TV. It's supposed to be your travel item, right? I bet you that they have something planned for like a just at home Switch. Oh, you think? You know, mm -hmm. a Switch at home that is more of like a console that can provide you that that little that extra little bit of hardware so you can run some of your games at a higher fidelity see some of the games at a more crisp quality potential potentially a higher uh, fps you know and and i and i do see like i do see if they're going to come up with a new breath of the wild they're going to come up with a new metroid prime i see those games working on switch and they'll make it work because they know that 
So many people still have a switch and will still have a switch. But I do see a scenario where they come out with like a switch at home that is just a console that gives you that better performance, that higher fidelity for someone who maybe wants to play the new Zelda or the new Metroid Prime game and have it look its best when they're playing it. Yeah. We have the Switch Lite, so are we going to get the Switch Heavy? Yes, exactly. <laughs> that yep. is the question. And the question that I'm going to pose to you, Malik, what games do you want to uh, have us see this year? I want Crimson Desert. Uh, and we'll get into this later about how I don't think that we are going to get Elder Scrolls this year. But I, I need an in-depth RPG in my life. And, mm-hmm. and there's such a lack of like in-depth RPGs recently. I mean... I hated what Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I look okay as someone who's played Assassin's Creed for a very long time from the beginning. It, they need to stop making it Assassin's Creed and just focus on it, making it its own thing. I get it. They like, need the Assassin's Creed wait, name. Whoa, whoa, wait! What I played Assassin's Creed from the very beginning. What are you talking about, bro? <laughs> the story in Valhalla is like half Odyssey, half Assassin's Creed, but confused thoroughly. It's it's like they it's like they half read a mythology book and they're like, yeah, this was good enough. We got this. It was good. But aside <laughs> from that, taking cover, <laughs> Assassin's. I love Assassin's Creed. I want them to do better. I I want them to go more of like the Ghost of Tsushima, Elder Scrolls route. Like get get more in depth. They've been doing kind of like the same kind of style ever since Origins, and it's fine. But it's not like the Assassin's Creed experience that I really want from Assassin's Mm. Creed per se. I would I would like Assassin's Creed to go more back towards like the thief or dishonored kind of style that they okay. have. Um, that that's what really drew me to Assassin's Creed. But Crimson Desert, it's from uh, the Pearl Abyss, uh, same people who make Black Desert Online, a giant MMO, one of the bigger MMOs out there, and it just looks insane. I mean, it, all I need to say to sell it is you can ride a dragon with people shooting cannons at you. So I mean. Oh, and they, the cool thing is too is like Black Desert Online has always been about combos and they've taken a lot of influence from fighting games and wrestling uh, in order to like make the combat systems a little bit more in depth rather than just like a heavy attack and a light attack and then abilities so sure. that's what I'm really looking forward to hopefully alright yeah. I mean if you could ride a dragon I mean sure <laughs> <laughs> I'll try it yeah. You, so, see, you sounded so sure. not enthusiastic about that. <laughs> it's because like, I came after like, Assassin's uh, Creed yeah, by yeah, yeah. I'm it's still hard to right now. Um, so I'm trying to find the positive, and it's just a dim light right now in my head. Um, At least I didn't bring up Death Stranding again. We oh, God. leave that in 2020. You know what? No, I'm going to bring it up again, but maybe a little later. First, no. uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Caboose, I want to get to what game you think we're going to see in 2021. Uh, I'm, I, I, although some people might think this is not going to happen, I'd say there's like a 90% chance that we see Spider-Man 2 revealed. I don't think it's oh, coming yeah. out this year. I think it's coming out next year. Um, okay. But I, I'd say there's, there's definitely a chance it comes out this year as well because Insomniac's a big team and it's very clear that the team that worked on Miles Morales wasn't the exact same team that worked on Spider-Man PS4. Um, so there's certainly a chance that that they got people who've been since the launch of Spider-Man PS4 in 2018 working on a Spider-Man sequel, like officially a legit straight up sequel. Um, so there's certainly a chance it comes out this year. I'm, I'm leaning more towards it coming out next year. Um, but I do think there's a really good chance we see it revealed this year. And I think that PlayStation is probably going to hold another one of those big PlayStation state of plays where we're going to see some stuff from God of War or Ragnarok. And then I think their big bang will be Spider-Man 2. You're going to see him with like the symbiote suit or something like that to kind of set up the yeah. premise of the game because they, they obviously not, not to spoil anything, but I think you would know if you're playing Spider-Man PS4 <laughs> and the way that they started started world building there that Spider-Man Miles Morales didn't really shy away from that, okay? Right. Uh, yeah. Clearly, we're going somewhere here with this story. There's supposed to be a finish line, uh, and we haven't reached it yet, so I'm really excited to see where they're going to go next. Insomniac has been crushing it 
yes. lately with Spider-Man PS4, uh, Miles Morales, Ratchet and Clank looks amazing. Uh, and then now potentially a Spider-Man 2. Like they got such a great lineup of games. And now that they're an official like first party studio for PlayStation, they got a lot backing them. Uh, and so I have like nothing but high hopes and complete faith in them as a studio and, and as developers. So I can't wait. I can't wait to see what they got in store. And I think that at some point this year, we're seeing Spider-Man 2 revealed. Is is Ragnarok kind of a given excited for everyone at this point? Is I, yeah. Well, well, yeah, we'll get to that one uh, <laughs> a little later. I do want to say, though, Stealth Gamer uh, 026 uh, said in chat, I hope we get a tease to Marvel's Spider-Man 2 this year mm -hmm. at E3 because it would make sense since the first game came out three years ago and usually after three years we get a teaser to the sequel right. um and it's also reported that devs are able to make games faster now thanks to playstation 5 hardware i am i'm on board with that caboose like i think especially how <laughs> miles kind of teased uh the next spider-man game although i was a bit disappointed with that i want to see more um oh, i, I love that I feel like we're we actually may see that game holiday this year or early 2022, just because so. <laughs> a lot of Insomniac knows exactly what they're doing. They know how to play into the fandom. They are fans themselves. How mm -hmm. they tease everything in Miles Morales, especially how they announced that. Oh yeah, there's a Miles Morales game while they're also developing, you know, Spider-Man Two. Mm -hmm. I feel like we're at the point we're gonna see that game, and they may just throw another Miles Morales at us and be like, "And it's coming out this year." <laughs> I could definitely yeah. see that. The only thing that that I'm not well, actually, no, I, I shouldn't say. I was gonna say the only thing I was not sure of was just with the fact that Miles Morales, like reported, didn't sell as much as Spider-Man PS4. But I think a lot of that had to do with some mismarketing in terms of the fact that it was kind of like like the day the game came out there were still people like coming to my channel like wait this game's on PS4 I didn't know like I had no idea uh and I think that that's that has nothing to do with the game I think that a lot of people just didn't know it was coming to PS4 um and so probably now that the PS5 will have been out for at least a year by the time this next game's coming out and hopefully in that time a lot more people have played Miles Morales which please do if you haven't uh like you're out of your mind like if you're a fan of spider-man ps4 i have no clue what you're doing not playing miles morales yeah. um yeah especially because it's like better in almost every way um and so hopefully by the time we get to spider-man 2 uh, a lot of people will either have a ps5 or will have played miles morales and be ready for the next game and uh we'll see i would love to see it come out this year that would be nice that would be very nice for me. Uh, I'm, just, I'm not. A, I'm not a hundred percent sure we see it this year, but I certainly think there's a chance. I'm a little hesitant to see a reality where Insomniac puts out three games in a 12 month period. Uh, but yeah. otherwise, I, I would be head over heels. Like I, I would love that because Miles Morales ended on such a great note. But yeah, yeah, I do struggle to see from a business perspective of why Sony would want to do that and That's just. Scary push all these yeah. games out especially when you're working around yeah they have ratchet and clank coming out this year horizon potentially god of war where does spider-man yeah. fit in in that and then what does that leave uh sony's catalog in 2022 i feel mm. like spider-man's a really great spring early summer 2022 game yeah mm. we definitely we're definitely going to get a trailer this year i don't i don't I see a world so. where they don't tease something even if it's like the ragnarok trailer where it's a few seconds yeah. you know yeah. we're gonna we're gonna get something but i didn't even think about that the the sony lineup this year is stacked yeah, yeah. yeah. well the thing is i'm thinking about it from the perspective of this game's been probably in development for quite some time yeah um, and yeah. that makes me feel that it's not in development for next gen so for that reason, I feel mm. like we would have we would see that this year, you know, rather than prolonging it to next year when a lot more people have next gen consoles in their hand and are expecting a lot more in terms of graphic and capability um, that they then would have to up in terms of a remastered version or a free ver upgrade for mm. next gen. Um, I think it just makes more sense if it wasn't developed for next gen, it would come out this year. But we will just have to wait and see. I, I think too that Miles Morales having like Miles Morales was a two year turnaround. That is crazy for as much that there is in that game and for as how different 
it is as a Spider-Man game to Spider-Man PS4 in terms of, you know, gameplay and story and mechanics. Um, I feel that now that they've nailed Miles and they know, like, they got it. Like, when you played Spider-Man PS4, I think everyone played it knowing there's room for improvement here. Like, they, we could do the air tricks a little better. The swinging still feels a little weighty. They're, like, there's just, there was room for development there. But with Miles Morales, like, I honestly can't look at the gameplay and be like, I think this needs some improvement, except maybe the stealth. But I'm not I'm never playing a Spider-Man game for stealth anyways. So that's sure. the, the least of my worries. So I think considering that they nailed Miles and now all they really need to do is find out ways to improve the gameplay of Peter. This game, this next Spider-Man game could also have that quick of a turnaround because the main focus at that point would be the story and developing it and writing it and making it good. Um, and so. Yeah, I mean, Camille's making some great points, but also you're making good points as well, Stephen, that there is a pretty packed lineup for Sony uh, exclusive or PlayStation exclusives. Uh, and I'm not sure like where Spider-Man could fit. Um, but I guess, yeah, I guess we'll see. All right. Now we'll also have to see what titles we think or what we'll want to see. Um, we Camille, like fine, Steve. Steve. You forgot oh, Steve. Gosh, Steve. Oh my God, I'm so sorry. We've been oh, so wow. Oh my God. <laughs> You just got Death Stranding on your mind and forget about I know, everything else. I, I know. I <laughs> on my mind and I was just moving on. I'm so sorry, Steve. That is my bad. Steve, take all the time you want. Let's dedicate this podcast to you. What games do you want to see? I only got one. Uh, I think it's a, for me, it was a little hard to kind of nail what games we've seen in the past that could come into the fold that we don't already know are coming into 2021. But the one that popped in my mind initially was Starfield from Bethesda Games. Oh, yeah. um, this is the game, like a brand new IP. Mm. They said that this is the one that's coming out before they even start, you know, really developing the new Elder Scrolls. So, and especially uh, a new Fallout. So those are way down the line. But Starfield was first announced kind of, I don't know, I would say prematurely, I think in 2018. Uh, and then they just went silent. They did a long time ago at this point. Um, so I feel like given how much time has passed, Given the you know rocky launch and follow up to Fallout seventy six, I think they're going to treat this year as the year that they come out swinging and say, "Listen, this is the new game." There were also reports that they're redoing their engine, beefing it up. Uh, I think this is a great chance for them to kind of showcase that Bethesda is just not out of the game just yet. Although a lot of people do consider you know Bethesda's golden age is in the past and whatnot, but I, I think this is a good chance for them to come out and uh, really wow us, uh, mm. depending on what our field actually ends up being. And that's a smart decision. Yeah. I feel, um, like you mentioned, like Bethesda has had a bit of a rocky road um, for the last, although Doom Eternal was pretty awesome. Sure. Um, but like for the last few years, it's been pretty rocky for them and especially to, uh, go into some of their IPs that are very, very near and dear to people's hearts. It wouldn't make sense. So why not release a new IP and take the time with those beloved IPs um, behind the scenes? Perfect sense. I, I, I see that. I mean, we also have Mass Effect, you know, maybe this year, maybe next year. I think Starfield has a great chance if they can come out before Mass Effect mm -hmm. to just completely overshadow it. Because, I mean, Mass Effect... Uh, Mass Effect 4 has to succeed. If Mass Effect 4 is bad, they will never make another Mass Effect. And that's just, that's just like, it's fact. Because, I mean, mm -hmm. people, after Andromeda, the fans don't really have a lot, of, a lot of leeway for mistakes. And also, you made a good point, is this year, it could be Bethesda's year, even going into next year. Because now that they're acquired by Xbox, you know, we have the potential of Elder Scrolls, Starfield, like, a new Fallout. All of this potential for them could be a new golden age for Bethesda. Could be. Um, the other thing that kind of popped into my mind was that before E3 was canceled last year because of covid and all that bethesda had planned to do a proper um keynote again at e3 but then they didn't do anything even during summer games fest so it leads me to believe like they had something planned but for some reason they just dis decided not to do it so maybe this year's the year yeah maybe do you think xbox will uh have their own showcase and kind of announce it in that or how are you thinking they're gonna roll it out i think it yeah definitely I, oh, yeah yeah, tied in with the Xbox showcase. 
Yeah, once they finalize the deal, because it's supposed to happen sometime early this year now uh, that the acquisition is supposed to be finalized, I think, yeah, why not do it during the Xbox showcase or whatever they decide to mm -hmm. do this year? And especially if they were to do it on their own, um, I don't think anyone would be watching for a new IP, especially from Bethesda, who's right. had a track record. Uh, record of like rocky games um so i think it just makes sense to have that backing have that support by xbox um alongside them For sure.